ages ago, a city flourished here in peace and splendor. But it was destroyed in a single day by a demon from the dark beyond. Historians claim a great calamity befell the city, but nay, twas a demon. The city sank below ground, one and one quarter of the old city became the demons then. This demon put fear into the hearts of all men and sent our minions to take the land. And it's then, its palace grew rich with the treasures stolen from all over the world. The demon built a dungeon near its palace and filled it with terrifying monsters. All those who fell into this favor were thrown into this dungeon to rot. Yeah, and the demon also had three dragon pets, Hooktail, Gloomtail, and Bonetail. These dragons flew across the land, spreading fear and sorrow over all. Even now the mere mention of a dragon is enough to give some the terror. In order to increase its already formidable power, the demon created crystal stars to hold the essence of the heavens. One of these stars was placed in each country to exert the demon's influence. One of the castles built to contain these stars still stands near Petal Meadows. One day, there came a hero who could banish the fell demon. The young toad from Petal Meadows was strong of arm, but shy of voice. All those around the boy teased him endlessly about the way he spoke. But when the demon cast his fearful gaze across the lands and reached out, the young toad used his strength and honor to defend his people, and he became a hero to all despite his odd voice. There was a wise Goomba from Bugly Woods gifted in knowledge of the world. When beasts rose to take the woods, this knowledge helped the people fight them. And this Goomba, who knew the way that every monster would attack, she began to think of a way to banish all monsters from the land. A Koopa who traveled the world alone, learning of the darkness covering the land. He went alone wherever evil dwelt and banished it with shell and sheer bravado. The monsters grew to fear this scar riddled Koopa who thwarted them at every turn. But the brave Koopa was finally taken in a trap set for him by the monsters. But then, a boo who fought with the monsters came and used her magic to free him. The brave Koopa's spirit had melted the heart of the cold boo's lass. The boo used her powerful magic to learn more about the evil they faced. We cannot destroy this darkness alone, she decided, her face a green mask. We need the toad hero of Petal Meadows and the wise Goomba of Bugly Woods. The Boo's magic drew the four heroes together to send the demon from the world. And so, the four heroes finally set out for the Palace of Shadow. The power of the world devouring demon was greater than any could imagine. But the wise Goomba soon realized that this was the power of the crystal stars. She thought of a way to take the stars and use them against the demon. She told the other heroes her plan and set in motion, banishing their fears. The Boo's magic and the Toad's strength created a gap in the demon's defenses. At that moment, the brave Koopa seized the stars and succeeded in badly damaging the demon. But even the brave Koopa's stroke was not enough to end the demon's reign. The wise Goomba thought of another use for the crystal stars in that dire hour. She suggested sealing the demon forever with the crystal stars. All agreed. The heroes matched their strengths with the power of the crystal stars and they successfully sealed the demon's soul within the deepest part of the palace. Together, they made it so that only all seven stars could break the seal. The four heroes thought they had sealed away the demon in all of its powers, but the demon used a tiny opening before the seal was complete to curse them all. While holding the crystal stars, they'd feel nothing, but when they let them go, a black box would appear to seal their souls within. The four heroes traveled the world, scattering the stars so the seal would remain but the last four stars each carried the curse, which claimed each hero. The hiding places of many of the crystal stars have now faded into legend, but some say that the wise Goomba hid one in the great tree. At that time, many monsters wandered in the nearby Bogley Woods. The tiny punies were always tormented by their fears of appetites, it was said. Pitying them, the Goomba hollowed out the great tree for the punies to live in. The punies were so grateful that they swore to protect the crystal star there. The Koopa hero went to a southern isle to hide his star where none would find it. But the Koopa was so tired from his journey that the pirate Cortez stole it easily. In that very instant, the brave Koopa was trapped in an inescapable chest. But Cortez did not realize the power of the star and lost it among his treasures. Once the Boo heroine hit her star in a steeple, she was trapped in a nearby town. Some say the crystal star lies in that steeple still. 
The strong toad held his star and continued his arduous journey, but eventually the miles took their toll upon him and he collapsed. A traveling healer happened by and saved his life, but the toad knew his fate was to be trapped in the box when the star was gone. So he asked this healer to hide the star in a secret place known to no one. After the demon was sealed within the Palace of Shadow, many refused to come near that place of terror. But as the years passed, entire generations forgot, and the pen penniless and the immortal began to congregate in this once barren place. This place soon became a populous harbor, the town of Rockport. And some even began to say that the underground city held a legendary treasure. But they were unaware that the demons slept beneath them still. The heroes knew that the seal might not last forever, and they sought to make the crystal stars available to one who might need them. So before going to their individual dooms, they made a map to all the stars, and to prevent an evil force from misusing this map, they placed it in a box that could only be opened by the pure of heart. Well, that's all the stories we can hear for now. There will be more stories though, and um, all of those mean that the guys that have been cursing us are actually the heroes that tried to stop um, the, the demon that once destroyed Rockport long ago. I think it's a really interesting story and it's a really cool one at that. A lot of backstory for the game and a lot of backstory for the box, uh, curse boxes. So it's, I think that's really, really nice from Nintendo to have made that. An up arrow? Up? Hmm. Of course! And he goes up, just as in Paper Mario 1, I think. What are you doing, Merlon? Whoa. Red orb, and you come out the other way. This is the Ultra Stone, so that is what the star sign meant. I picked this up at a flea market years ago and forgot it was in the attic. With this, I can power up your partners even more. Yay! So, we'll first upgrade your own orb. We are cooking now. Let me know when you want me to power up your allies more. So, I'm gonna be doing that, I'm gonna cut a little bit of it, so I'll see you guys in just a moment. Jesse me! Jesse me! Then you may go. Thank you very much, Merlin. After doing that, I just upgraded Dairu, Barbary, and Vivian. Uh, just so you know. So, now we've got a little bit more power with our allies. Let me show it really quickly over here. Um, Vivian has now 30 HP and she learned the move Infatuate. Dairu has 30 HP too and learned the move Stampede. And Barbary has 40 HP and he learned the move Bob on Bast, which, uh, if you let me, attack all enemies with a massive blast, which is pretty much the same as a Mega Bomb attack from the previous Paper Mario game. Which is really nice. Do I have enough coins for this? Do you have any badges that I that I can equip like for free? No, you don't. But you have an Ultra Shroom, and I afford it. I can afford it. Thank you very much. I am completely broke, so I just don't want another. Thank you. Now. Dude. Um, what was I going to say? Oh yes, we're now going to Don Pianta. I th I think that part at the beginning of the of uh, the video is going to take a little bit more into the editing part, but doesn't really matter. I can handle it. There's live streams here. I don't really think I will use live streams in the next chapter, and even so, I think I will level up enough for me to not use them. So I don't really think I need any more live streams for a little while. Wait, what? <sighs> Don Piana. Ah, <sighs> oh, Francesca. Oh, poor boss. The big man's been sick with loneliness ever since his daughter's cadet. Our underboss, Frankie, is gone. The boss is in shambles. What's the syndicate to do? That scruffy gang of punk thieves is stealing jobs from us right and left. 
Hey, but enough about us and your stupid problems, huh? What can we do for you? For you? I thought I he said for your nose. What? Tricks for the rich is training around? For the express exo express? Oh, you want tricks for that rolling with chin? Uh, ain't nothing we can do about that. Yes, giving out tickets? That's rich. You gotta talk to that boss for that. Francesca. Our trolls can't stand seeing the boss like this. If we just knew where those no light weeds was, we could take the boss to see him. You mean that cute couple, Frankie and Francesca? Were they on Kill Hockey? Who's know what now? What did you just repeat? Say, repeat that. You know where that drunk Miss Pianti is at? Yes, I know. Really? No lie! I swear to you, if you're lying, I will turn you into confetti, so help me. Well, that's where she is. Why don't you bring her back here, huh? Be a pal. With go ourselves, we can't leave the boss unprotected, you get me? Yeah, you bring this drunk Miss Francesca, and we'll do what we can to get her train tickets. We got a deal with what? Deal. See, now that's better. I knew once you understood our predicament, you couldn't refuse. Don't screw this up. I won't. I mean, I'm. I'm a Mario! I don't screw up! Well, maybe sometimes, but not majorly. At the very least. So, that is our next thing to do. I think we've been in this like for. Uh, my timer says 47 minutes, but. Um, I am pretty sure we've been doing this. Like with all the editing and stuff, like about eight or nine minutes, just now. So, unfortunately, unfortunately, I don't even know if we can cut through a pipe to uh, that place. Anyway, so I think we have to talk to Cortez because you know the entrance to Kill Hulk is right here in, uh, like, right here in Rockport. So we'll just talk to him in his ship. You want to kill Hulk, amigo? So there we go, sail again. Uh, good thing is that Cortez's ship is kind of like cursed, so it doesn't take that m that long to get to its destination. Really nice, really nice. And again, we get to see this part of the thing. Like, oh, it does take days. Well, gee. That's not nice. Okay, can I please, can I please, can I please get you two? Thank you. We're over here, and with that... Thank you, Cortez. We can now leave the boat and start wandering around. If you want a walk -a bomb you can go walk him but I, I don't really want to use my, my usage of walk -a bombs I, I've already gotten three, I think. So I'm not I'm not risking it or anything. Save really quickly. I have not saved in a real long while, so might as well do it. And over here, you're going to see Francesca and Frankie. So the fuzzies here are gone completely, which is a really nice thing if you ask me. Yeah. Oh hey, it's Mario. How you been there, Paul? We do something for you? Well, what? The boss is sick. Oh, poor daddy, oh no, and at a time like this... Huh? You see, I, I just dropped the wedding ring Frankie gave me around here. I can't possibly leave until I find that ring, otherwise something may eat it. It must be somewhere between here and that skull rock. Listen for a second, my fussy little coconut. Shouldn't we forget about that ring for now and check on the boss? How could you say that, Frankie? That ring was a symbol of our love. We have to find it. We have to. Or maybe you just don't love me anymore. Is that it? Of course I love you, my little bacon burger. None of your sweet talk now. You're going to have to say you love me 100 times. 100 times? If you love me, you have to say it, Frankie. Oh, come now, babe. Of course I love you, my little short stack. No, please, let's go. No, you have to say 90 more times, Frankie. Oh, fine, you crazy damn. I love you, 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 I love you. Ten times. I love you, 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 I love you. 
I love you, 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 I freaking love you, I really freaking love you, I love you very much, I love you, I love you more, I love you even more, I love you more, I love you, love you, love you, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you, do 60, be faster, I love yous. I love you so much. Even I, even if I sit it on 69, I love you so freaking much. I love you. 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 There, I said it. I didn't actually think Nintendo was going to put all the hundred times in there. Oh, Frankie baby, you're such a silly Billy. No, my little cream puff. Let's find that rain right away. What do you say? <laughs> I wonder if these two will be alright on their own. Uh, Mario, I think it might be a good idea to help them. Yeah, it is actually a very good idea. So let's start looking for that ring. Um, I actually would do the same thing if my girlfriend was mad at me. Because I have actually said that, like, <laughs> so much. I will admit this video at, at her. I will, I will share the video with her so that she, only so that she, she can sh see that I love you thing. Oh, but oh my gosh, we have this thing again. And we have the pewter freaking piranhas again. No. Nope. Okay, so I just developed a strategy for the pewter piranhas. You can actually just like stand right there and use a quick hammer and a fiery jinx. And that will do them on. That will do them in. So, really nice way to take care of them in just one turn, if you ask me. I finally got the thing down. God, I love my computer. I mean, I, I love my controller. Damn it, dude! I just don't even know, guy. <laughs> a lot of you may be thinking that I do this on an emulator, but I just really, I really don't do it on an emulator. I found another ink. I found the same ink. The thing is that I, I can actually hold it now. Actually, I just figured out that I just figured this out. You have to come over here and do this. So there's the ice power badge. It was not a snowman, it was it was a badge that would have help, helped us a lot against the embers and lava bubbles that I just did not know how to get. Damn that. Oh, you see that? That's the ring, wedding ring. So now I'll come back when to back to Frankie and Francesca. Ah! That's it! That's my ring, you found it! Yes. Frankie, now we can go home to daddy. We sure can, my little cheese and cracker, let's go. Well, so anyway, we'll be down at the dock. Hurry back, please. Dude, I mean, you were the one that made your boyfriend call, say, I love you 100 times. You were the one that did not want to go out of the island because the thing would eat your ring, even though it would still eat it if you were here. And you were the one that wanted to postpone the meeting with your father so that I could find the ring for you. That is completely, completely nuts. Okay, Mario, I think we're ready, Paul. Yeah, we are. Let's go back to Rockport. Oh, Daddy, please hang on until we get there. Okay. Return to Rockport, amigo. Wait, wait, wait. We are off. Cast off, amigos. To Rockport. That is actually said, Miss Amigos. <laughs> now it seems I'm, I'm giving off Spanish classes here. But, um, I guess even with all the cutting and whatnot, we're all up to at least 13 minutes now. So I think that's gonna be enough for the episode, guys. So if you like this video, subscribe to my channel, comment, and please don't forget to give me a thumbs up uh, or a thumbs down, uh, whether you like the video or not. And I will see you guys next time back in Rockport. Bye!